Welcome to Business Infrastructure, the podcast about curing back office blues of fast-growing businesses. If you're a business owner or operator looking for practical tips and solutions to scaling your business in a sustainable manner, you're in the right place. Now here's your hostess, Alicia Butler-Pierre. Hello and welcome to the Business Infrastructure Show, where we share tips and resources to help you cure back office blues. I'm your hostess, Alicia Butler-Pierre, and I'm joined today by mental health expert, Silk Glob. Silk, also known as Silk Celia, is an executive coach and organizational psychologist who helps executives, founders, and experts to live a life without burnout, stress, anxiety, or proofing themselves so that they live their true potential. With her Elevate Intensive, you can reset self-limiting mental programs in four sessions. The Elevate Intensive Therapy, over a course of 15 years, combining the best methods from different therapies to bring rapid transformational change for her clients. Silk has trained with a broad range of international experts like the world-renowned therapist Marissa Peer, a rapid transformation therapy practitioner, and Professor Dr. Justin Kennedy, who specializes in applied neuroscience coaching. Today's show is going to be a little different, mainly because of the subject matter, but it's such an important topic that we absolutely can't ignore it. So Silk is actually going to share with us today the one thing we need to know about mental health as a leadership asset of the 21st century, with suicide rates on the rise, especially amongst executives, entrepreneurs, business leaders, this is a topic too important to ignore. So without any further ado, Silk, welcome to the show. It's such an honor to have you here today. How are you? Thank you. I'm very, very fine. Thank you very much, Alicia, for your really nice and generous introduction. And I'm really happy to be on your show. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And again, this is such an important topic, the topic of mental health. Can we start off with you first telling us a little bit more about you and your company and what you do? Yes, so I am an executive coach and I am in this kind of business to help leaders to really reset their inner mental programs so that they can really be at their level best when they lead into the or in the future. And what I have also discovered in the last years is that we're really a crossroad from an industrialization state to a data state. And before we spoke about physical health, we have to be physically healthy. And nowadays we have to speak to be mentally healthy. And that's really my core business, so to say. That's a really interesting way of looking at it, having shifting the focus from being physically healthy to mentally healthy. And I definitely understand now that you've explained that, why it's so important. Now, in your opinion, Silk, what is the one thing we need to know about mental health? Yeah, the one thing that's very, very important, especially also for your audience and the people who are listening now, is how you deal with stress. Yeah, you already mentioned as an entrepreneur, you face many, many challenges. Yeah, often you're on your own or you, you start to have your small, small business. You never know when you get financed, the up and downs of an entrepreneurship. Yeah? And we always say, oh, a nine to five job, but what a nine to five job also had, it gave you a certain structure. If you're on your own, your income depends how many clients or how many products you're, you're selling. And there is this thing of it's like really hard to, to really set up the business and how you regulate your stress becomes very, very important. And it's not only the hard work you're putting in, long hours of work, but also the high job demand. Sometimes you have invested a lot and the reward that's coming back is maybe not balanced. And all this creates stress. Amen to that. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Amen. Yes. Oh my gosh. You know, that it's, it's so true. And I think, I don't know about where you live, but here in America, mental health is still very much considered taboo almost. I'm starting yeah. to see more and more people talk more openly about it, but specifically as business owners, I think we tend to be even less willing to have these conversations because we don't want to come across as being weak, right? As owners and as leaders, we want to always appear to be in a position of strength and certainty, and we know what we want, and we're go-getters, and we set our goals, and we structure Mm. our days to accomplish those different goals. Yeah, there's also a certain mindset that causes even you to be more stressed, because if you believe you have to be perfect all the time, or you have to prove to others that you're actually a really good person, that you're lovable, likable, if you're also driven on this, that you, like, like all your energy is driven by going away from a certain pain and not moving towards your greatness, this also causes you a lot of stress because some people, they also create uh, businesses because they finally, they think they have their own way, they, they can decide what they want to do. But some of them are still driven to be really extraordinary yeah? because maybe deep inside, they don't have that. And There was this very famous uh, study in 2014 by Michael Freeman, the university professor in the States, and he asked entrepreneurs about their mental well-being. And what came out that quite a number of them suffered from mental health issues, depression, anxiety disorders, ADHD, and the prevalence was much higher than in the same year the normal average American population. Mm. And this really gave a spiral of uh, in the media, in articles where people started to openly discuss mental health and some entrepreneurs, they even opened up yeah, and say they're, they're actually struggling with it. And in my case, like I, I come from a family who also had a family run business that centuries back. And one time after four, like around 14 years, we ran into a financial crisis. And the more, the worse the financial crisis became, the more worse the mental state of my mother got. And I can really clearly remember I was around nine. I can see we were all gathered in the living room and my mom just on the brown carpet and she said, I'm out of this, I'm out of this business, I can't stand it anymore, you can take over. Mm. And this was the, the time my mother really started to become, yeah, she had to seek medical help and she was out of business for many, many years. And out of this experience of this accumulated stress, yeah, you have your family, depending what's coming in. She developed a bipolar depression. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, and at that time, this was in the late seventies. Yeah, this was totally taboo. Someone who had to go to a psychiatry, the whole family, we had to pretend everything is fine. Yeah, and because Mm. it was a small town, everybody did know each other. We had to represent ourselves that we are all normal. And therefore, this is the time I really, it was not the easiest time, but this shaped also my mission to help people to get help early enough, to get the signs early enough so that you get the right help on time before it all accumulates. So, so important. And, and I, I was yeah. actually thinking along those lines as I thank you first. Thank you so much for sharing that very personal story. And I'm hoping I, I know for myself and for those hopefully who are listening, we're probably thinking something very similar. At what point do you know that you need to get help? In other words, sometimes you know how it is, Silk, we, you know, you, as an entrepreneur, you are very ambitious. You have all of these, these things that you want to accomplish. And then you're dealing with an incredible amount of rejection. 
sometimes on a daily basis. Yes. But yet there's something, you know, there's a very admirable quality about us as entrepreneurs because we, we know how to eventually bounce back and we bounce back very quickly and we roll up our sleeves and we say, okay, I'm, yesterday was a bad day, but today is a new day and I'm going to keep pressing forward. But how do we recognize when we do have those moments because we are human and there's only so much rejection you can handle and there are life events that are happening, different traumas that we may go through. Mm. At what point do you know to raise up your hand and say, I need help. I can't do this alone. Yeah, I, I believe it. the first signs is you feel it physically. Okay. You feel worn out. Yeah, you feel exhausted. You feel tired. You may already start that your sleeping cycle changes. Hmm. Yeah, and if this is good for three weeks, it's not the normal, okay, I, I, I work now uh, for many, many hours, so I can explain why. Or I feel so low because um, I, there, there was a tremendous re- rejection. I didn't get the deal, so that's normal. So we, we know some traumatic events and we say, okay, it's, it's just going by. I, I will recover. I will recover, yeah? Mm-hmm. But then you're not recovering. Or you have a negative thoughts. They come in to say, I don't know. I think there's no hope. I don't know how to handle all this. And you pretend, especially also men, they, they function a little bit different. They don't admit to themselves that uh, they have a problem. In this case, and there are some studies about it, men become more moody. They lash out on people. They become out of sudden more aggressive. People are changing their personality. Things you used to like to do, maybe to go for a walk or meet friends, you're not meeting them anymore because you have no time and you feel really, really exhausted. And what for me is also prevention is also very, very important is not only to see the signs when it's uh, already over the board. Yeah, and something, if it continues for over three weeks, this should be a warning signal. Mm. Okay, so three weeks. Yeah. Hmm. So if we could attempt to tie this into business infrastructure, for those who are listening to this show for the first time, business infrastructure is a system for how you link your people, processes, and your tools together to ensure growth in a profitable and sustainable way in your business. So Silk, when it comes to people that we can reach out to, if we're at that three week period and we we can self recognize or self diagnose, okay, wait a minute, something's wrong. I I usually am able to bounce back pretty quickly, but I'm not recovering. It's been over Mm. three weeks now. Who are some of the type of people that you would recommend that we reach out to? Yeah, of course, uh, in in this case, to to get also the right diagnosis, sometimes it's burnout, yeah, if it's really Mm work-related, but burnout can also develop into really an anxiety or depression. Professional help, a medical check-up with a psychiatrist, with a clinical psychologist to find out where you are, yeah? Yes, and you can call, yeah, especially if more and more and more negative thoughts are coming in. It's up to you what kind of therapy you seek for. In let's say in the medical world, a combination of psychotherapy and medication is quite good. And what people always think of medication out in in the last time is because prolonged stress or traumatic stress kills also cells in your brain especially in in areas where you have memory to make good decisions to stay also focused and what they found out it's not the uptake of whatever chemicals it's more 
to give the, the brain time to recover its cells, yeah, its neural and its neural cells. In this case, there are different types. For me, I'm not a clinical psychologist, and I also tell that people. I but I have a method to help people to find out the underlying issue. Yeah, mm -hmm. if it's a certain mindset that brought you there, also the exhaustion that comes with it. That's the psychological part of it. Uh, depression there is a biological part of it this you feel in your body your exhaustion and also change in your sleeping circle in your appetite and there is also the psychological part of uh, depression and this is helplessness feeling of helplessness and there are studies that show that often people had in their childhood traumatic events of loss like divorce of parents or a loved one died or certain family situations that already created a, somehow a base yeah in your neurological network how you deal with stress mm -hmm. yeah and this is picked up it can be picked up later in life so i'm more on this side to find out the psychological root of a burnout or de depression. We kind of touched on the fact that you have a, a method or a process called the Elevate Intensive Therapy process. Can you tell us more about that and how it works? Yes. So in the first session, we get an overview about your current state, about your mental program you and for example your burnout and your failure and to see how you and your different components are working together it's more like see in a system yeah you have a, a circle mm -hmm. and then you place an object for yourself and something that represents your issue and then you see what kind of object did you choose? Well, what, how does it stand in relation to you? Yeah, what's more the energetic part of it? And in the second and third, and out of this session, we get an idea, what is the pattern that's running you? Yeah, what, what's the pattern of your failure? What is the pattern of your burnout? What's the pattern of your depression? Is it a certain feeling or is it a certain belief? And then in the second and third session, we go really back in time on this feeling or this belief to find out the root source. So we dig really deep into the root, where it's originated from. And often these are incidences in your childhood from four to five, seven years, you may not consciously aware of. Yeah, so yes. memories and coping strategies you develop out of these experiences. And this is deeply encoded in your brain and you don't have consciously access to it. They run you on your background. Mm. Yeah, and you don't need uh, to, to be consciously aware of it because they have served you in the past and now you see limitations. Yeah, these were programs you created as a child, but now you're an adult and you're still running on the same software, so to say, and you never updated it. Hmm. This second and third session finds out from where this program was developed bring it to the surface and then crack the code and, and that you are grown up now and you would deal differently now, not as old, but, but as a grown up person with all the new resources you have, resources you didn't have as a child. And in the fourth session, we really upload, the, we restart like the new program you have developed now and your vitality, your new thinking is really uploaded so that your well-being can come back. How long are each of these sessions typically? Uh, one hour, so one in hour. four hours. If we would need uh, longer, I, I would just e extend it. But in four sessions that air, the first session is one hour, the second and third, that's two hours together, and the fourth session is, uh, again, one hour. 
Do you find that that's remarkable, first of all, <laughs> remarkable that you can kind of reprogram yourself and, and level set in, in just four hours? Yeah, now, it releases, a, yeah, your pain. It really releases your pain. All your head several traumatic events in your life. I had one client and it was impossible to work in in four sessions because there were so much traumatic events in the childhood. There there was no sense of security. And then I I advised really to go to someone uh, with a longer psychotherapy because this can't be dealt with in four hours. Or okay. four sessions, but someone who has a stability, who had also developed in his life or her life a healthy self, was a strong, healthy self. There may be parts that are traumatized or they didn't know how to deal in certain situations, but this person also has a, a healthy part, and then it's easy to release that pain. I'm sure there may be someone who's listening who's thinking. Well, how is a psychologist like yourself, Silk, how is the work that you do different from a life coach? Can you explain that difference? Yeah, for a life coach is normally oriented into the future. So you are here and what are your goals? Set your goals and then I will move you from A to B. As uh, the work I'm doing is a crossroad of therapy and coaching. We are also going back to the past because how can you move forward if you still have baggage from the past? All beliefs you are carrying with you, all feelings that can be easily triggered. So we are also going back to the root course. We take out the root and replace it and implant a really new belief and thought so that you can actually move forward in your life. Thank you for explaining that because I've heard over the years, I've heard many people try to figure out, well, what's, what's the difference between, you know, obviously there's the educational aspect, but just in general, what is that difference between a life coach and a psychologist? Now, when it comes to tools, so we've talked about the, the, the types of people that we can reach out to if we find ourselves suffering from prolonged periods of depression and burnout and anxiety. And you've talked us through your, your process, your Elevate Intensive Therapy process. What are some tools that you recommend? I would imagine meditation and breathing exercises are some tools, but are there some others that you recommend? Yeah, and uh, this is really for pre- prevention. And I really highly, therefore I said, is, uh, you can really help your brain to regulate itself better in times of stress, stress anxiety, depression, burnout. They develop on the same issue on that stress. And the better you are able to deal with stress and regulate yourself, the better you are prepared. And for this, I recommend highly sneeze. Yeah, like sneezing. And <laughs> as, you, have, you have to explain that one. <laughs> yeah, as much as you can. S stands for sleep. Don't underestimate sleep. The recommended time is seven hours per night. There is a reason behind it because sleep is regulated and this is deep inside your brain and it functions only at night time and releases certain hormones to regrow cells, to um, regulate your sleep. That's the first thing and the easiest thing you can do. Sleep extremely important. Then N stands for nutrition. Nutrition is like good omega-3 fatty acids because the uh, brain cells, the nervous cells are made of fat and they're made of proteins. Good proteins is also very important. Leave any starchy carbohydrates and sugar because they already increase the turmoil that's going on in your body in times of stress. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then we have A for activity. 
sitting the whole day because you're busy doing your business, that's also not good. You need, if you are sitting a lot, have an activity that's the opposite of it. Make breaks. I know it for myself. I can sit for five, six hours nonstop and I don't realize what's going on in my body. Therefore, I have uh, the Pomodoro method. I have an app. After 52 minutes, it rings. And then I have to do a break, either to do some household chores or to do some exercises or to de do some de uh, breathing work for 17 minutes. And then it rings again and I'm back. Much more fresh and start again you need these breaks you can't uh, and i can see it i can sit for five hours but in the end i can't even focus anymore yeah my attention goes down and down and therefore really have these breaks and activities that we then we have uh, as knee a uh, the next sneeze social activities it's good to be on social media, but it's better to meet real friends. Mm. Yeah, or to go out with your dog. Yeah. Uh, if you have kids, do something with your kids. Yeah. And if it's in playing with them for, for a round, close friends, just to meet up, just to talk about things which are casual. Yeah. Because then you, you get bonding or hook up with other entrepreneurs. Because they, they give you support and you get a sense that I'm not alone. People have the same issues like me. Yes. And make an effort, really schedule it in your calendar that uh, twice in a week I, I'm going out and see people. That's very, very important. And then we had this need. Then the last is enthusiasm, passion for what you're doing. And Got one emotional regulation, and this really helps with your stress response. It also helps you to find out what's going on in your body, and that's the emotional regulation that's pretty, pretty important. And meditation is very important because it uh, trains your prefrontal, and this is the part executive functioning planning, decision-making, all this is done with the frontal part of your brain. And these methods, they really train to make this part stronger, but also help you to regulate your stress response. I think I missed what the first E stands for. Would you yeah, mind repeating yeah. that? Yeah, S for sleep, then N for nutrition. And here I forgot the first E, emotional control. Okay. Emotional control. Activity. Then the next S was for social, social. interaction. And the last E was for enthusiasm. Okay. I love that. So yeah. we need to sneeze more. That's a very easy yes. acronym yeah. to remember. Uh, now, Silk, unfortunately, we're coming to a close. Yes. There's so much more to yes. say about this topic. And we... We'll probably have to have you on again sometime in the near future. But before we close, are there any other resources that you can share with us where we can learn more about mental health? You mentioned an activity app that you have on your phone. What's the name of that app? Yeah, I have um, a Brain Focus. Okay. Yeah, mine is called Brain Focus. It's uh, after this Pomodoro method. It gives you, and you can adjust it. Some people, they may can only focus for 25 minutes. Minutes. This, you can even uh, actually also, yeah, if there are students, uh, it's better to have um, peers in that in which you really focus and then have a short break and then come back. So that's brain focus. Then I also have a mind learn a little bit more about how to transform stress into well-being, educational part in it, but it also shows you, it gives you a sneak peek into this rapid transformation therapy that I'm using. Okay, and what was that? Was that a book or a... No, it's a masterclass. It's oh, an a masterclass. online masterclass. Okay. 
I have, and then people can just register and immediately they, they get a link to watch that masterclass. Okay, and so how do people sign up for that? What, what website should they go to? Yeah, they can go to my website, philcelia.com, and there you can also find out about the method. And there's also a link to this free masterclass, and there's also a, a, a link to a free discovery call. Yeah, so you get a consultation session of 30 minutes and figure out, um, get more insights why it's happening to you right now and what you can do about it. Okay, this is great. How can people get in touch with you? Is the best way to contact you through your website, as you mentioned? Yes. Okay. Uh, Through my website or um, LinkedIn. Okay. They are also post quite regularly. And the name I use, the Silke Glab. Okay. And for yeah. those of you listening, if you want to connect with Silk on LinkedIn, her name is spelled S like Sam, I-L-K-E. And then last name is G-L-A-A-B like boy. Oh my gosh, Silk, you are amazing. There's so much more, <laughs> that, there's so much more that I want to ask you. And that's why I'm thinking we'll, we'll have to do a part two. But thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I also appreciate all the listeners who are listening to it. And especially if they pick at least two things of the sneeze, the sleep and emotional regulation. Good food for thought. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Alicia, for the great work you're doing out there to give people guidelines. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And you're, you're helping as you know, part of our mission is to make sure that people have actual resources that they can go back to and as they work through certain challenges as they're operating their businesses. So no, thank you for for being so open and willing to share your resources. And so now I want to talk to you. Yes, you, the person listening to this right now. Listen, we both know that operating a business is a road less traveled. It can be lonely and take you on an emotional roller coaster you may not have been mentally prepared for. Now that you've heard from Silk, are you going to take your mental health more seriously? I remember years ago someone saying, it's easy to start a business, but really hard to maintain it. And Silk was very kind enough to let us in on a personal story that her family went through as they were operating their family-owned business and how left unchecked, unfortunately, some mental health issues led to her mother's diagnosis as having bipolar depression. Owning a business will challenge you in every way imaginable. You can't grow your business successfully if you're burned out and depleted. But there is hope. As a reminder, Silk told us that the one thing we need to know about mental health as a leadership asset is that it's all about how we deal with stress. If you believe you have to prove yourself all the time, it can and will create stress. A lot of times, Silk said, we're driven to be extraordinary, and it really leads to things that we've developed in our childhood that sometimes requires some reprogramming. It's all about our mindset. She also told us that prolonged stress can actually kill areas of our brain particularly those areas that enable us to make decisions. This can be prevented if we look for the warning signs. And Silk told us that some of those warning signs include our physical health. How are we feeling physically? Are we worn out? Are our sleep patterns changing? And if we find that it's not going away after a week or two and it's continuing past three weeks and we're not recovering, then it may be time to reach out to some of the types of people that she recommended, which would include psychologists. She also talked to us about her own specific tried and tested Elevate Intensive Therapy process. And the tool that she recommended that I think is absolutely brilliant is her SNEEZE method. SNEEZE is an acronym for Sleep, Nutrition, Emotional Control, Activity, social interaction, and enthusiasm. Make sure that you do at least, as Silk recommended, at least two out of those those areas that she mentioned. 
make sure you download this episode, store it in your digital library, because I could definitely see myself coming back to this episode and replaying it, I'm sure, several times (laughs) in the near future. Now, if you want more support in fine-tuning your mental health, definitely reach out to Silk. The best way to do that is on LinkedIn. Again, you can look her up. Her name is Silk Glob, S-I-L-K-E-G-L-A-A-B. You can also go to her website, which is SilkCelia.com. That's S-I-L-K-C-E-L-I-A.com. As a reminder, we will have links to all of the resources that she shared in the show notes at businessinfrastructure.tv. Did you know we have a YouTube channel? Yep, that's right. You can find this show on as well as other videos on YouTube. Just go to businessinfrastructure.tv and look for the link. When you get there, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you'll know when the next episode airs. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, stay focused. Be encouraged. This entrepreneurial journey is a marathon and not a sprint. Until the next time. Thank you for listening to Business Infrastructure, the podcast about curing back office blues with Alicia Butler-Pierre. If you like what you've heard, do us a favor and subscribe, leave a rating and review, and more importantly, share with your colleagues and team members who could benefit from the information. Join us next week for another episode of Business Infrastructure with Alicia Butler-Pierre.